Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Lucas from No Code Buffs here, and today I'm going to show you how to get around the timeout issue when using the Responses API. So the problem is essentially that the Responses API takes too long to answer sometimes, and Bubble times out around three minutes, right? And so I want to get rid of this issue by setting up the OpenAI webhook. So whenever the Response API call is ready, um, I want OpenAI to notify Bubble that the call is ready so we can retrieve the call, right? Um, so we have this background variable here that determines whether the run um, will happen in the background or not. And when the run doesn't happen in the background, this is what happens in Bubble, okay? So I have this workflow here that when I click the button, I call the OpenAI um, API. This is a API that I've set up in the previous video, so I'll leave a link down below if you want to watch it. But essentially, I've set up the responses API to do a web search call. Um, and so whenever the background variable is false, or we don't include the background variable in the, um, the API call, which defaults to false, um, this workflow step essentially stays here until it's done, right? And so if it stays here for more than three minutes, um, Bubble will time out and we will receive an error saying that Bubble cannot connect to the remote server, right? And so what I want to do is to is for this call to run in the background. And so we can move to the subsequent steps of this workflow. And then um, on a background workflow, we receive the response for this call whenever it's ready. Okay. So this is what I'm going to teach you guys how to set up. And so we can eliminate this issue of timing out whenever we have a response call that takes too long. So the first thing I'll do here is to include this background variable on my API call. So let's go to plugins, API connector. I already have my open AI call here. And then let's add this new variable called background. And we can set this to true. Okay. So when we initialize the call here, what we'll notice is that we get the response back right away, which let us keep moving on the workflow while this call is being processed on the background. So um, let's move to the workflow and see what happens here now. So we have the same call here, which will run in the background. And then I don't want to set a state right away. What I want to do is to make a change to the user and then save this uh, response ID. So let's make sure that we're getting this response ID from step one and saving it to this uh, current user. So now let's take a look at how we can configure the webhooks in Bubble, and then let's move to OpenAI to see how we can configure the webhooks there, okay? So uh, to configure this in Bubble, let's move to the backend workflows and um, make sure that you have a paid plan or you are on a free trial to be able to access these backend workflows in Bubble. And let's create a new workflow and let's set this to a API workflow, okay? And let's name this perhaps um, response webhook. So let's make sure to click expose as public API workflow. This, work, this workflow can be run without authentication and ignore privacy rules um, on this one for, this, for now again. Now for the parameter definition, uh, let's make sure that we click on the text request data, which will enable Bubble to um, expose this link here that we'll use to set up the webhook on the OpenAI side, okay? So let's copy this link here, and now let's move to the um, OpenAI platform again. Let's click on settings, and let's go to webhooks down here. Let's create a new webhook. Let's say um, response webhook. Let's paste here our URL. And then for event types, um, you know, we have event types for batches, responses, fine tuning jobs, evaluation, videos. Um, I'm only interested in response options here. And so I'm assuming for videos, we'll probably need some type of web hooks in bubble as well, since I'm assuming it will take a lot of time to generate a video. And so the response will time out in bubble if it stays there on the workflow for too long. I haven't tried with Sora 2 yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So let's click here on choosing all the responses event types and let's click create. Now we have a signing secret here that we can use to verify that data is coming exclusively from OpenAI um, and not other sources trying to push data through your webhook link. Um, I'm not going to show you how to set this up right now, but make sure to, to use this to keep your workflow secure if you want to. Okay, so let's click done. And the first thing that I want to do here is to go back to my bubble. Uh, let me make sure that I'm, I'm looking for uh, data here. 
and then on OpenAI, we can click here on send test event. So let's send a response completed, for example, and then um, we'll receive a, a HTTP 200, which means that we successfully push data into, uh, through the link, okay? So if we go back to Bubble now, we can see uh, what items we get on the, the response uh, completed job, right? So we get the, the webhook ID, object created at type, and we get the response ID back as well. So uh, let's save this. And um, now what we want to do is to save the response output on the current user that has this response ID that we collected on the call, right? So what I'll do here is to, to make changes to thing and I will find the user. So search for users where the response ID is equal to the request data ID, okay? So now I found the user that has, and then let's choose first item, right? So now I was able to find the user that requested this response call, okay? And let's create a new field here on the user um, that is something like response output, okay? Let's set this to text and then let's collect the response, okay? So to collect the response, we'll actually need to get data from the response using this response ID. Um, and I haven't set this up in bubble yet. So let's do that real quick. So, um, okay, so one more thing here that I want to mention. So after you initialize the call, you need to remove this initialize part of the link, okay? So just make sure that you've removed this after you have initialized and then click save, okay? So perfect. So let me go back to API reference and let me find the response API um, create a model response, get a model response, okay? Now let me co copy the curl. Let me go to my plugins, API connector, import another call from curl. Let's paste this here. And so um, we can name a new call, get response. We have already set up the headers um, on top here. These are shared headers, so we don't actually need this here. And so for the response, I can set this, these curly, these brackets actually, and do response ID. Okay. Um, now I'll be able to dynamically set this value here. So this will not be private uh, since I want to be able to access this value in the workflow. And um, let me use this response ID as an example, just to initialize the call. Um, I think this will work. So let's initialize the call. We get an error um invalid request so we don't actually see this response id okay so since this response id didn't work let me try to get a real response id back from this workflow here so um if we actually run this uh we'll be able to see the response id here on the user so let's visualize this on the front end so let's make sure that we can see the current user response id okay and so let me make sure that I'm also logged in. So um, let me go to users and then um, log in as a user here. Okay, and let me make a call such as what is the Tesla stock price today? So let's do this AI web search and I get a response ID back. Okay, so this should be sufficient for us to um, initialize our call here on the API connector. So let's paste this here and let's initialize the call. Perfect. So we get the, the call back. Now, um, what I want to do is to go back to my backend workflows again. And then the first step of when we receive the webhook is that we need to get the data from this response, right? So let me make sure that I've set this here as use as action. So let me reinitialize again. So that way I can use this call on the workflow, move it back to back backend workflows again. And then if I look for OpenAI, I can get response. And my response ID will be the request data ID here. Okay, so it's the second ID. The first ID is the webhook ID, and the second one is the response ID. So let's click here. Now we got the, the data back from the response call. And now for my user um, that I've found here, so I found the user that has requested this call. 
Um, and now I'm going to save in this users the response output. Okay, so which is step one output each item's content, first item text. Okay, so now I believe we're ready to display uh, the response on the front end, right? Um, so let me delete the response ID here. And instead of the web search, which is the name of the page, uh, custom state response, uh, what we'll actually do here is current user response, um, response output. Okay. Right. So, um, whenever I try this call again, the call will run and the webhook will receive the response and will save the response to this user. Okay. So let's try this out now. And we try a call such as, um, what is the Tesla? stock price today so we received the response back from the webhook now uh, what is this tesla stock price today it's not a call that takes too long so it would actually not time out on bubble but if we ask something that takes longer to research or to load if we have a really big prompt then it's definitely going to take a little bit more than three minutes and cause bubble to time out but now that we have the webhook, we can essentially make any request and whenever the response is ready, it will come back to bubble. Now, keep in mind that I'm saving this uh, response ID and the response output on the current user, but you can save it anywhere that fits and use this webhook technique for any API calls that you have, especially OpenAI's responses, or maybe if you're trying to create videos with Sora, I think you'll highly benefit of using this uh, webhook approach. And keep in mind that they didn't have this before. Whenever they launched the assistance API, there was no webhook. We had to keep looping in bubble to get the response back. But now whenever the response is ready and we have the output, we're able to make OpenAI send data to bubble whenever it's ready. So Thank you so much for watching. We've reached the end of this video. And if you haven't done so, uh, subscribe to the No Code Buffs community where you can find no code developers and solopreneurs working on no code AI, and you can have direct access to me and ask any questions and so on. Okay. Um, it's completely free to join. And so uh, check it out. We have a bunch of resources. Um, we also have a few blogs. We have the roadmap of what we're trying to build. Um, and so it's a, uh, I highly suggest you join. Um, I'm not going to charge you anything for it uh, for now. And we have a lot of cool people inside that you can meet and uh, perhaps work together, make connections and, and so on. So again, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, drop down below as well. If you have any video suggestions, uh, please let me know and I'll, I'll see you in the next one.